High on a Colorado ridge lie a set of scratch marks encased in rock for a hundred million years. Are they unprecedented evidence of a violent dinosaur clash? Less than 15 miles west of downtown Denver, in the shadow of the Rocky Mountain foothills, sits one of the most significant fossil sites in the world. Seen from above, it's like a jagged spine rising from softly undulating land. Look closer and you can see how this formation earned the name, Dinosaur Ridge. Well, there's two main types of footprints here. You can see this one here that's very bird-like. Then we have these types of footprints which are more chunky or fleshy. And they're made by an iguanodon type of dinosaur, a big herbivore. Scientists have already dated these fossilized tracks to about 100 million years ago. You have to get your eye in kind of to see what's here. Can you see the way that there's two big, long grooves? The markings are extremely large, but does that automatically mean they were made by dinosaurs? I suppose it's possible they're gashes left by ancient animals, but to my eyes, they could just as easily have been gouged out by a modern bulldozer. If these markings were made more recently, say by a human, machine, or even erosion, they would likely be lighter in color. That's because most rock has what geologists call patina, an ancient weathered layer that encrusts its surface. Once that patina is removed, the rock underneath appears to be a different shade. But that doesn't seem to be the case here. The surface of the marks appears to be relatively uniform in color, matching the shading of the 100 million year old rock around them. So it seems much more likely that these scratches were made when dinosaurs roamed this area. Hi. Hey guys. So I'm bringing in two experts in the field of 3D photogrammetry. This is gonna be like forensic paleontology. We might be able to see some things on our color depth maps and our other high resolution imagery that we don't see at, that easily with our naked eye. Fire. One more. Fire. Perfect, did that look good, Nefra? That looks great. I am blown away at all of a sudden those scratch marks look like scratch marks. On the right side of the ridge, I can now clearly see long, thin grooves, each about an inch deep for almost their entire six foot length. And this pattern is mirrored on the left side of the ridge, suggesting the bilateral symmetry of a two-legged animal. See that there's those three indentations right there? Uh -huh. I think that's the impression of just a moment of it if it's standing on one foot. So what do you think, Martin? Back part of the foot, yeah, 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 could well be. Yeah. Isn't this exciting? That's awesome. And bipedal, carnivorous theropods with three bird-like digits and sharp claws. So if we take a look at those prints and line them up with the scratch marks, we have a match. To find out, I want to do something a little unorthodox and certainly not high tech. Replicate the scratch marks with the model of a theropod foot. Let's go ahead and see if we can make the same kind of mark. Basically, it would have been kind of a forward to backwards motion, right? Yeah. Then it would have been both, it was double marks like that. You make a pretty good dinosaur, yeah. Honestly, these look very similar to the marks that we saw. But well, I think one of the important things to remember is that these uh, carnivorous dinosaurs are the ancestors of modern birds. For more than a century, some scientists have theorized that birds and theropod dinosaurs were linked. And new discoveries have bolstered this idea. A series of verified fossils found in China show some later dinosaurs were actually fully feathered, a clear link to birds. Some birds that are ground nesting, they do this behavior like they're beginning to uh, build a nest, but actually what they're doing is showing off to their partners. It's part of a courtship or a mating uh, ritual. And that, I think, is what we're finding. Wow. Wait, what? Foreplay? Mating? I didn't see that coming. I pay a visit to ornithologist Daniel Sepka, who has spent years exploring the idea. This is definitely a behavior we see in modern birds. 
I mean, they're not just walking by. It doesn't really look like they're digging. It's more like they're scratching back and forth in one place. And so this looks like something that's almost uh, ritualized. You know, it's really funny because the, the main analogy I can see in modern birds comes from an animal that's, you know, about this tall. So oh, really? a, a piping plover. They are cute little birds, and the males, to attract the females, they'll basically scrape little nests in the sand. And if a female becomes interested, the male really starts getting excited and doing little dances. It tilts its head down, it fans out its wings. Um, and if it's lucky, the female will choose to mate with it. They'll create a lot of these little scrapes with their toes, which were pretty similar to a theropod's foot, um, three little toes, and they use it as a way to try to, you know, attract a female. So instead of thinking of a giant lumbering, uh, like T-Rex type dinosaur, people should be thinking of a, a humongous plover. Yeah. And while we may never know with absolute certainty what the prehistoric world was truly like, fire! new technologies continue to draw its star players more fully out of the shadow of extinction.